Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got another one for you. Today we are going to rotate the tires on my wife's 2019 Jeep Compass. All right guys, so here's everything you're gonna need with tools and supplies to get this job done. You're gonna need at least four jack stands to get the whole Jeep up and off the ground. You're gonna need a jack. You are going to need a impact wrench, or you can do it by hand if you so choose. I'm not going to. So an impact wrench, then we're also going to use a, I believe it is a number 19 uh, millimeter socket for the job, a piece of wood, preferably something hard. And then as always, don't forget, you need yourself some air tool oil before you start using your tools. Now, again, I want to go on and just say that what we're going to show you today and what I'm going to do today is for entertainment purposes only this is something that can be dangerous and i just want you guys to know that what i'm showing you and the points that i'm going to jack off the, the vehicle are things that i want to make sure that you guys understand that i'm doing them you don't necessarily need to do them with that being said there are points under here as you'll see and i'll show you right now there are four points on each corner. As you can see right here, there is a triangle. There is also a enormous cutout of the plastic on the undercarriage. Now, what that means is normally if you are using the scissor jack that comes with the vehicle, what you would then use is it would sit around this pinch weld and essentially sit on each side of this pinch weld. So the Scissor jack comes up, sits up here, and basically cradles your pinch weld and holds it so that the jack doesn't fall off, and that's what supports the vehicle. With a jack stand, you would normally just place the jack stand on the pinch weld. The problem is, is that sometimes that weight can crush the pinch weld or fold the pinch weld over. I do not recommend using these singularly, 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 to use as jack points when you are using the trolley jack. The reason why is because you're putting all the weight of the vehicle on this one pinch weld. And what that will do is it will crush the pinch weld. So if you use a center point over here, which is what we're gonna do today, the center support cross member that runs across the uh, bottom side of the motor, the cradle helps the motor and a lot of your suspension parts here. You can use that as your jacking point, which you can then pick up the front and then you can place the jack stands here. So when you let it back down, yes, the weight is on here, but the weight is on both sides. So it's the vehicle is being supported by both sides. And then you can go to the back and use the back side to jack up and then put your jack stands on each side to do that. Let's get started. All right, guys. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our socket, maybe, potentially, onto our air ratchet a few drops of oil. So now you have oil in there. Go ahead and connect your line. Give you a couple. What I like to do is go ahead and we'll grab all of these and we'll just place them around the vehicle. Already and Now this is the cross member that I was talking to you about as you can see right back here. Put the jack stands up on those pinch welds that we were talking about earlier. It seems to be fine. Give it a quick little, seems perfectly stable. And there you go. All four wheels up off the ground. And we'll just repeat the process on all four wheels. 
All right, guys, and this is how we make thumbnails. Thumbnails are always fun. But as you can see, we got her entirely up off the ground. Everything's looking good. All right, guys, so what we're going to take a look here is you can see there is a bit of uh, surfaced rust uh, that is starting on here. Uh, I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to get some uh, steel wool, I think, or just a wire brush uh, and knock that off. Uh, as you can tell, that's probably been sitting on there a while. Uh, we haven't, it's probably been, I don't know, 5,000 ish miles since I've rotated her tires. So it's just definitely built up there. Um, the last two times since we've bought it, uh, it's gone back to the dealership to have all of the uh, oil changes and stuff done. Uh, I just have no longer going to do that. I'm not going to pay $100. $30, I think it was the last time for an oil change and a tire rotation when I can clearly do this at home in my garage. So that's something to keep in mind as well. But while you're under here, just kind of, you know, take a, take a quick little peek around and just see, touch everything. Make sure like, you know, all your wheel speed sensors and stuff and your ABS lines and all that stuff seem to be in good condition. There's no abrasions, no nicks, no cuts. Nothing that would kind of alarm you, you know, make sure you grab anything that, that you can just kind of go around real quick and just grab and everything seems to be okay. Like I said, the biggest thing I can see here, honestly, I mean, besides it needing a wash, uh, is just, I, I, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean this up real quick with a, with a wire brush and just kind of try to knock that off just because the wheels seem to come off a little hard. So, I mean, two minutes of your time, a little bit of elbow grease. was I cleaned up as best I could all the mounting surfaces so over here and over here I cleaned everything up that I could to get everything as smooth basically what we're going to do is it's you do what they call an X pattern so you're going to take this driver I mean this passenger side wheel and this one is going to come up to the driver's side front this driver's side front tire is going to come straight back here and this driver's side rear tire I don't know if I can do that here is going to come around here and this one is going to go to the passenger side front and then this tire so we'll bring this one over here. This was your driver's side rear, is now on your passenger front, and your passenger side, what was on the passenger side front is now on to the passenger rear. And that way, the next time, if you give a quick comparison, this tire was here, so now, because it goes straight back, this tire will then go to the driver's side front the next tire rotation and then this tire will go back here and then eventually back to the front so this way you get everything rotated i kind of wish they offered lift kits because this kind of looks kind of cool i almost i wish they did offer some big like a big lift kit like that but it being a coil spring and cv boot you'd have to basically drop the entire unibody in order to do something like that but that is pretty cool i like i like kind of like the look of that i wish that was what you could actually do with these all right so i'll throw you guys up back on the tripod right, right now what i'll do is i will put it on the lowest setting on the gun and then just kind of tap them real quick And again, do that on all four tires. In case anybody was wondering, the reason why we use a piece of wood when you're lifting on a piece of metal is that if, there, if anything happens, the wood will absorb and mold essentially to whatever you're lifting on. That way you don't damage anything, you know, like the drain plug here or the, the side protectors or the anything on the casing itself. Always take the time to just do something like that so you don't ruin other things. 
All right, so now she's back down on her own weight. The only thing left to do real quick is I'm gonna go grab my torque wrench and we will torque the wheels. The torque spec for these wheels, and it's essentially the same for pretty much the inception of the Jeep Compass, uh, whether it's the 2007 or these newer models, uh, it's 100 foot-pounds. So right there, if you can tell, is 100 foot-pounds on the money. Go ahead and lock this in. Always do a crisscross pattern. All right, go ahead, do all four wheels, and we'll catch back up. All right, guys, so there you have it. There is a full tire rotation on a 2019 Jeep Compass. Don't forget, make sure, as I stated before, I am not a professional. If there are things that I'm doing that seem sketchy, it's probably because they are using the cross members in the rear diff may not be for everybody. Take your time, do it right, and you'll be able to do your own tire rotations. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video on doing the tire rotation on a 2019 Jeep Compass. Obviously, this encompasses all the newer body style except for the 2022s. Very easy. Um, as I stated, 100 foot-pounds of torque when you are retorquing the wheels back down. Again, I am not a professional. Read the owner's manual. Follow your owner's manual. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Give me one of these if you so choose. Again, I hope you really enjoyed it, and I will talk to you next time. <music>